The fastest way to get rid of your monarch butterflies is to tear out your tropical milkweed and put in native milkweed. What? Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. I was working in my garden. I made a discovery today and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I figured I'm going to share it with you and ask you because some of you may have wonderful ideas or thoughts. What I'm going to talk about is the monarch butterfly. You know, I did a video early on this year on how we had a caterpillar and the butterflies were coming in and long story short, everything was great. But the problem was I went to the nursery and they sold me tropical milkweed. It seemed to get some people upset, but let's back up a minute. Let me tell you what I know about butterflies. So I know more about birds and other animals than butterflies. I'm gonna tell you a little bit of what I know. The monarch butterfly is amazing. And yes, they can migrate from Mexico all the way to Canada. But here's one thing, that migration is not one butterfly. One monarch butterfly can fly 250 miles in a day with their total lifespan being 3,000 miles. Mm, that's not going to make it to Canada and back. In case you didn't know, it actually takes four generations of the monarch butterfly to get all the way up and back. Four generations. So it's not the same butterfly. It's that butterfly going, doing her thing, laying eggs. And then those caterpillars turning into butterflies, continuing the journey and laying their eggs. And the cycle goes on. So it's four generations. All right. So now we know that. Now let's talk about something else. A lot of people do not like the tropical milkweed. They want them to migrate all the way back to Mexico. Well, we all know that hummingbirds have changed their patterns over the years. Instead of going all the way back to Mexico, Central America, and down into South America, a lot of them now are wintering into Texas, in Southern California. You know what? Life patterns change. The world has evolved, food has evolved and they have to go where the food is and where they can survive. So a lot of animals, as we know, change their habits. And that may be what's going on with the butterflies. Now keep in mind, tropical milkweed isn't completely a stranger to Southern California. It's actually, from what research I have found, it's been around for 100 years, possibly 200 years. So it has been around tropical milkweed. Yes, we've got the native milkweed. And you're thinking, well, just plant the native milkweed. And I'm gonna tell you a story in a minute. This is why I'm going to ask you what I should do. So after we were very successful in having the caterpillar and having butterflies in our yard, but upsetting a few people, I decided to call the nursery and they so graciously said, bring back the tropical milkweed we sold you and we will trade it out for native milkweed. So I gingerly went back thinking I was doing the right thing and still not knowing. And I traded the tropical milkweed with a few different varieties of native milkweed. I got the flat leaf, I got the wide leaf. So I have a, a different variety for them. I didn't see any butterflies afterwards. All of them that were th flying through the yard every single day as I sat out there, suddenly there's no monarchs. Went back to the nursery, it was vegetable season. I was looking through the plants and a lady told me, you know, she lives by me. I have planted up my whole yard with milkweed. I have yet to see a monarch. I said, oh, well maybe it takes time. She says, I've been planting it up for years, five, six years, no monarch butterflies. I know they're around, she said, but they won't come to the native milkweed. I said, that's interesting because we were doing quite well with the tropical. Then I talked to another neighbor, same thing. He planted up his yard and he said, isn't it a shame, he came to me one day, that there are no monarch butterflies in our area. I said to him, what do you mean there's no monarch butterflies? 
We had them coming in every day. I'd be gardening and they'd be all around me. I did photographs of them. I've got them laying eggs. I've got them flying around. I even saw one take 30 minutes to go find the plant. Circles and circled the yard till it found the plant. He said, no, it couldn't have been. We don't have monarch butterflies. We've had milkweed planted different types and no monarch butterflies. And a few other people told me the same thing. They were afraid of the tropical milkweed. Well, you know what? I have since found out that not all monarch butterflies migrate. A lot of them have found other areas where they winter and then continue their journey, not going back to Mexico. Here is the issue, just like what's going on around the world and with us. The land is changing, not just because of anything else going on with the world, but farming. So you've got a lot of land cleared. This is in Mexico as well. Everything cleared in their farming. Well, in the beginning, it didn't really hurt anything from what I understand because a lot of the milkweed that was growing there was growing in ditches and areas that was run off from the farms. So there was plenty of milkweed for the caterpillars to live on. But since the droughts are going on in different areas, they have now, and plus to save money, they now have a lot of water that's piped. Underwater irrigation, you know how that works. So there's no real water runoff, which has now cut the milkweed for the monarch butterflies. And keep in mind, that's the only thing that they can produce on has been cut way back. So now there's less milkweed of any kind in Mexico where they normally used to migrate to. So they can't really survive in the numbers and their numbers went down. So more people started to plant and grow tropical milkweed, which is now produced their numbers three folds over that many monarchs now have been counted and the numbers are starting to get bigger now keep in mind here's another thing monarch butterflies tend to get a parasite now it doesn't kill them because it is a parasite and it doesn't want to kill its host if it kills its host the parasite will die too but it can weaken them now, when they lay their eggs, if the parasite is around, whether it's on the plant or on the egg or, or whatever, it can wipe out the caterpillars. Now, keep in mind on this, a female monarch can lay anywhere from 300 to 800 eggs in her lifespan. And her lifespan isn't as long as a lot of us would like. And out of 250 eggs, they estimate that approximately 20 will make it to the monarch butterfly stage. Now the monarchs are very smart butterflies. They have found out that the parasite that they can have on their body that doesn't kill them, but can weaken some, can be brought down, almost eradicated, by feeding on tropical milkweed and laying their eggs on that. The tropical milkweed has a higher level of toxins in it, a little bit more, than the native milkweed. So if they lay on native milkweed and they are carrying this parasite, most of their babies will not make it. And they know it. I mean, they lay one egg per leaf on a lot of these plants. So they're not laying a ton. They come in, I've seen them in my own yard, land on the milkweed, lay up one or two eggs, and then leave. Now they have figured out that if they lay on tropical milkweed, there's a better chance for their eggs, their babies to survive. That's pretty good. All right, so now keep in mind, my yard was full of monarchs. Every day I'd be sitting out there and seeing them fly through and look and look and come to the tropical milkweed, which now is not there or has not been. Let me just say has not been. Now that I've got multiple plants that are native milkweed, I don't see them. The scent isn't there. They don't want it. They absolutely don't want it. I had the native milkweed when we had the caterpillars that were on the tropical milkweed, and they would not go to it. I mean, I put it all around them in pots and plants, and I was hoping that they, would go, they wouldn't even go to it. The caterpillars didn't want it. Now they won't come into my yard because it's only got native milkweed. They're not seeking that out. So whether they're going to continue going to Mexico or not, these could be monarch butterflies that live here in Southern California. 
they're not going to lay their eggs on native milkweeds. Now, that is my dilemma. This is what I'm asking you. Do we allow the monarch butterflies who want to lay on tropical die out? Because that's basically what's going to happen. They're going to fly around. They're not going to find what they want. And eventually they're going to perish. I don't know what the answer is, but I most certainly don't want them to die out. People have stepped in and saved a lot of animals before. And I'm not saying we're even saving them. Tropical milkweed has been around for 200 years in California. I don't know what the answer is. If people didn't step in with the California condor, we wouldn't have them back surviving in the wild today. Among other things that people have stepped in to save. I'm not trying to save the monarch butterfly. I'm throwing this back at you. Do your research. Look it up. I'll throw some links underneath here of some really good videos with full research on this. Now, the reason I'm tossing this at you and talking about it is I was sitting in the yard and I was gardening in the rainbow garden and I saw a monarch butterfly. Wow. I haven't seen one in months since I got rid of all the tropical milkweed. What in the world was that monarch butterfly doing flying all around? I was so excited. It's going to go to the native milkweed. I'm finally going to get monarch butterflies. It never even went near the native milkweed I've got. None of them. And then I looked around. Lo and behold, the tote that I had a flower pot in with some tropical milkweed was now growing a tropical milkweed. I didn't plant it. But remember, I had it there and it had flowered. It's a beautiful plant. Reminds me of the rainbow popsicle I had as a kid with orange and red, vibrant colors, gorgeous flowers. They had seeds and the seeds were blowing around. It just so happens it got into my tote where I was growing watermelons. And now I have a beautiful tropical milkweed coming up. Now I'm not going to pull that out and there's no place to return it. And I don't think I want to do anything with it. I know that there is an answer to it. Some of the answers are if the plant harbors too much of this parasite, because they're getting the parasite from their milkweeds on some of them. But if there's some parasite on there, they say that in November and December, cut the milkweed, the tropical milkweed to the ground, and it will regrow brand new growth from the roots. That is one of their answers in all this research where the native milkweed tends to die back because what happens in the winter is the monarch butterflies find some place to just hang on to and they're finding some eucalyptus trees in different areas in the united states to just hang there and wait till the weather warms i'm not going to pull it out but i find it fascinating that they have sense that there is another tropical milkweed there and they're coming back for it. So, what do you think I should do? I know that the newest answer that I've come up with is to have multiple so they have a choice because they're finding out they've not all migrated all the way down south to Mexico, that there have been some that do not migrate. And if they all migrated back to Mexico and let's say they couldn't find enough to eat, I mean, think about it. A caterpillar, when it's in its young stage, really tiny, they only eat a leaf here and there. But when they get big, they can devour a leaf in a matter of hours. And that means an entire plant if you've got more than one caterpillar there. What would you do? What do you think? What do you think I should do? Should I allow this plant to get big and strong and, and do what some of them say? Cut it down in the winter because they're not going to be looking the last stage of this generation is not breeding at this time. So they're not looking to lay eggs as we get into winter. They're looking to find a place just to basically hibernate, wait out the winter, and then start taking off and re-going into the production of laying eggs, the females, when spring starts. I don't know what to do. Now, at this moment... Knowing what I know, I'm going to leave the tropical milkweed and see what happens. And then I'm going to think about what I'm going to do. I've got native milkweed growing here, which nobody seems to like anyways, at least no monarchs. And I'll wait and see what happens. I found it interesting to talk to people 
and have them tell me that they've been growing it. Not one caterpillar has ever ended up on any of their milkweed. Even at the nursery, the lady working there explained to me that somebody came and did a lecture there and explained that it's not even true that they stop migrating. The ones that migrate want to migrate, they will migrate. The ones that don't migrate will stay here. Hummingbirds are starting to stay here because the weather is better in certain areas. That's why they stay in Texas and that's why they stay in Southern California instead of all disappearing. If the weather's warmer, they're going to stay there. They're going to stay where they have food. So give me your thoughts on this. Knowing that we were successful in one of those generations of monarchs coming through my yard when I had tropical milkweed early on, now they come through here. If they don't sense that there's any tropical milkweed, these that may have parasites on them do not want to lay their eggs on native milkweed. What would you do? I don't know. I think Mother Nature really does know best, and I think it's all part of things evolving and changing. We know we're losing a lot of different species of animals. We know that animals have evolved over the years. We know that the world evolves. And maybe the butterflies, the monarch butterflies are one of them. I just am throwing this out at you to give me an idea on what do you think? What would you do if you had monarch butterflies around knowing they will not go to the native milkweed? I don't know. And some of you might say, well, just don't put it out. And it will force them to fly to Mexico. If they can't get there, then all those eggs they had will not ever be laid. And this is why their numbers had dropped drastically. They were worried that they were going to start to lose the monarchs. And all of a sudden, their numbers have tripled in just the past few years. Give me your thoughts. Because I'm really curious. What would you do? So I hope... I gave you something to think about. Maybe some of you will tell me what to do and they'll give me an idea. And if not, don't worry about it because I enjoy all the butterflies here and we have a lot of other ones that have caterpillars. And I do protect them. I throw tool over them so the birds won't get them when I see them, swallowtails and different things. Been doing that for years. I don't know. I have a dilemma. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. And don't forget, to eat what you grow. Not what milkweed. Don't eat milkweed. It's toxic. Bye bye. You know, it's coming back. It's got green grape at the bottom.